the U.S. economy and the U.S. stock market are diverging. The economy is slowing while the stock market is on fire. Is this sustainable? What is driving this divergence? And what could trigger the next recession? What are the best convergence trades right now? The post-COVID environment has been a challenging one for macro investors. Global macro hedge funds lost money in 2022, barely outperformed cash in 2023, and have made just 3.6% so far in 2024. One reason why macro investing is struggling is because many well-established precepts suddenly stop working. A good example was the widely predicted recession in 2023 that didn't happen. In early 2023, many leading indicators, including the widely followed Conference Board Leading Economic Index, were suggesting that a U.S. recession in the second half of 2023 was not only possible, but very likely. The yield curve was pricing a higher probability of a U.S. recession than was even the case ahead of the 2001 recession and the 2008 and 9 recession. For most of the first half of 2023, Wall Street consensus was that there was at least a 60% chance of a U.S. recession over the next 12 months. Not only there was no recession in the second half of 2023, to add insult to injury, U.S. economic growth actually accelerated strongly. What happened? That so many smart people got it so wrong. One popular precept that survived the recession fever last year was the so-called SAM rule. Named after a former Federal Reserve economist, the SAM rule says that a recession is very likely when the three-month moving average of the unemployment rate becomes greater than the low of the unemployment rate of the previous 12 months by 0.5 percentage points or more. This rule, which has a near-perfect track record of more than half a century, was never triggered in 2023. The SAM rule is a useful rule because it does not generate too many false alarms. This is why the fact it is now flashing yellow is getting a lot of attention. As of last month, it is at just 0.43. Does this mean that we're getting closer to the next recession? Recessions are associated with high unemployment. The implicit assumption behind the SAM rule is that once the unemployment rate begins to go up, it will keep going up once a certain momentum threshold has been reached. We can think of the threshold in the SAM rule as to when the dam breaks. Are there other signs that the dam is about to break? Well, the current economic condition index from the University of Michigan Consumer Survey has now fallen three months in a row to the lowest level in a year. Ironically, notwithstanding the continued strong equity rally and stable energy price. U.S. consumer spending has been driving this economic recovery. However, if the unemployment rate keeps going up and U.S. consumer confidence keeps going down, we could see a sudden pullback by the U.S. consumers, especially given personal saving rate is at a historical low level right now. In this respect, we should view the weak retail sales of the past two months as a warning sign. Another warning sign is the fact that the National Restaurant Association Expectation Index is now in contractionary territory, with restaurant operators reporting net declines in both same-store sales and customer traffic in May, marking the continuation of a soft patch that began early in 2024. U.S. consumers account for 70% of U.S. GDP. With the red-hot U.S. government spending finally showing signs of slowing, Americans have to keep spending at a high level just to avoid a recession. I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to take that for granted, especially given my long-standing prediction of a big increase in political uncertainty in the run-up to the most contentious and consequential U.S. election ever.
more and more people are talking about this. Tucker Carlson talked about this already. I mean, I've been talking about this for the last six months, which is uh, what, what happens if you wake up one morning, Trump is dead. Okay, what happens then, right? I mean, and, um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, like I, I suspect this is the reason why Trump hasn't even, you know, basically chosen a, a VP running mate. Because if he had chosen a VP running mate and then something happens to him, that would not be the end of the world. Whereas like if he hasn't got a VP running mate, and if something happens to him, he knows that the country is going to go down the toilet. So that might make the other side think again before taking them out. The Sam Rue says the risk of a recession is rising. However, to get a recession, history says another shoe has to drop. What is that shoe? Economists tend to think of the unemployment rate as a lagging indicator as mostly a reflection of labor demand. When companies are making more money, they tend to hire more people. When they're making less money, they tend to hire fewer people. The general direction of the unemployment rate is primarily driven by the profitability of businesses in the aggregate. This is why corporate profit margin is a good leading indicator of the business cycle. As you can see on this chart, margin compression almost always preceded a U.S. recession. For the last two years, interest costs have gone up, labor costs have gone up, raw material costs have gone up. Yet, remarkably, U.S. non-financial corporations somehow managed to maintain their near record profit margins. Somehow, U.S. corporate profit rebounded in the second half of 2023. Somehow, U.S. corporate profit was able to keep pace with nominal GDP growth over the past year. How did U.S. corporations achieve this? By boosting labor productivity growth, by passing on higher costs onto the consumers, and by paying down debt. But not everyone can do this. For example, smaller companies couldn't. And this is why Russell 2000 has not yet recovered its peak in 2021. But even among the large companies, profit growth is concentrated among the lucky few. In the first quarter, the combined earnings before interest and taxes of the Magnuson 7 increased by 50% compared to a year ago. In contrast, the earnings of the other 493 S&P 500 companies fell by 6%. The market expects the Magnuson 7 to maintain their high earnings growth into 2025. Consensus is that S&P 500 will see a 10% growth in earnings this year followed by a 13% earnings growth next year, meaning a further increase in corporate profit margin. Does this mean that there will be no recession anytime soon? The Magnificent 7 account for more than 20% of the total earnings of S&P 500 companies, but they employ only a tiny fraction of America's labor force. This is why what matters for aggregate labor demand and the outlook for the unemployment rate is the profitability of other companies and not that of the Magnuson 7. More specifically, whether generative AI can help these other companies make more money so that they can hire more people to grow faster. This really is the million dollar question, whether you are a macro investor who wants to figure out the Fed's next move or a stock picking equity investor. One thing is certain, the fact that the Magnificent 7 are making money from AI is not a guarantee that other companies will be able to do so too. Right now, all that is really going on is that NVIDIA is selling AI chips to Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Meta to power their data centers so that they can offer more AI-enabled cloud services to their customers. NVIDIA is making money. The others also making money, especially given they're spending on expensive new AI chips will hit their income statements only gradually. I don't think everyone else will make money as easily, especially given the subscription fees that they pay to cloud service providers will have to be expensed right away. This means unless AI creates immediate payoff, which seems unlikely, the current AI fever may have a neutral or even negative impact on corporate profit margins, at least in the near term. The U.S. economy and the U.S. stock market are diverging. The unemployment rate is rising, 
but the U.S. stock market is having the best year for an election year in more than 50 years. In my view, this divergence is not sustainable, especially given the fact that the equity market rally is predicated on the assumption of further acceleration in corporate earnings. The massive positive wealth effect created by generative AI has given the U.S. economy a boost over the past year. However, I'm skeptical that AI will provide even a fraction of the boost to the broader economy than it has for the Magnificent Seven. This does not bode well for the labor market. And if the labor market weakens further, we could see the consumers start to retrench. I like owning gold, the Japanese yen, and the September VIX futures. <laughs>